Live from Sydney, 7 News with Ann Sanders. First at four, good afternoon. In breaking news, the head of Australia Post has resigned following scrutiny over lavish spending, including luxury watches for executives. Live to Olivia Leeming in Canberra. Good afternoon, Olivia. CEO Christine Holgate has stepped down. And after the Prime Minister's outrage at four Australia Post executives receiving Cartier watches, Christine Holgate has released a statement saying she has made the difficult decision to resign. I appreciate the optics of the gifts involved do not pass the pub test. My sincere apologies if my words or actions have offended others. She says she's not seeking any financial compensation and will cooperate with the inquiry underway into spending by the Australia Post's entire executive team. Those findings due later this month, Anne. All right, Olivia, in other news today, draft laws have just been released to crack down on corruption by all public officials. Yes, the government's been sitting on this legislation since December, finally released by the Attorney-General this afternoon to set up a Commonwealth Integrity Commission, a new body to investigate corruption by politicians, their staff, government departments and entities, intelligence agencies, the Australian Federal Police and universities, given the power to make arrests, tap phones, search premises, confiscate passports and compel people to give evidence or they could face two years behind bars. But controversially, politicians and some public servants won't face public you, hearings Walsh, with the matters General investigated Walsh. privately. Thank you. Whether or not the general voter thinks that they're fair or they um, are warranted or whether or not they represent good or bad process, I mean, you know, that's for the general public to decide. Ultimately, a court should be making a public determination mm -hmm. of guilt or innocence, not a report. Labor has been scathing, warning that under this model the Commission wouldn't be able to set up its own investigations and would only be limited to looking into criminal offences, meaning the government's likely to have to rely on cross-bench support for this to pass Parliament next year. And Olivia Leeming in Canberra. Thank you, Olivia. NRL star Dylan Walker is facing new accusations of assault. His career once again hanging in the balance. Laura Banks is following this developing story. Laura, it's not Walker's first run in with the law. What's he alleged to have done this time? Good afternoon, Anne. Well, Dylan Walker has been charged with two counts of common assault following an alleged altercation outside this Italian restaurant here in Narrowena last night. Now, it was around nine police say that Walker came to pick up some takeaway. Now, when he's gone to leave the restaurant, it's alleged that he got into the car of a woman that he didn't know. Now, when he was confronted about his actions, it's alleged that he has then assaulted two men before fleeing. Now, police have caught up with Dylan a short distance from the restaurant and he's been charged and bailed. Now, it's not Dylan's, as you say, first time in the headlines. He was, just last year, cleared of some serious allegations of assaulting his partner at the time. He vowed to stay out of, the, uh, out of trouble, rather. Now, the NRL is aware of last night's incident. The integrity unit is working with the club and police, but the charges don't trigger the NRL's no-fault policy, given that the sentence, uh, the charges rather, carry a sentence of less than 11 years. But Walker will appear in Manly local court on November 18. And Laura Banks reporting. Thank you very much, Laura. New South Wales Health is embarking on a COVID testing blitz across 10 suburbs in Sydney's southwest in a bid to bring an emerging cluster around Hoxton Park under control. Amelia Brace is across all the developments. Amelia, also today, an Australian icon is back in business. It is, and the Sydney Opera House is lifting the curtain with the season to officially start tonight uh, and tours resuming on Thursday. It's a big breakthrough for the Performing Arts Centre, which was in lockdown since March. The Opera House is determined to support local artists who will replace scheduled international acts that have been grounded by the pandemic. As a state, we recorded one new local case of COVID-19 today, which was reported yesterday, a child infected at the Preston's trampoline park. New South Wales Health has called for anyone who was in that centre last Sunday to be tested. Also issuing an alert for the Bambinos Kindergarten in Horningsea Park. Anyone there last Thursday or Friday is considered a close contact. And must get tested immediately and isolate for the full 14 
days from exposure, regardless of the result of that initial test. The centres closed for deep cleaning and contact tracing and investigations are underway. Six people tested positive in hotel quarantine today, a program that is in the spotlight with cases doubling in just two weeks, now to an average of five a day. That dramatic increase has been blamed on an explosion of cases in the US and UK, with Aussies more desperate than ever to get home. Anne? Thank you, Amelia. Two volunteer firefighters have had to leap for their lives as a car ploughed through a roadblock and into the scene of a fatal accident. The female driver swerved at the last second, hitting the truck and ending up in a paddock at Burra in the mid-north of South Australia. The firefighters had blocked off the Goida Highway after a trailer swung into the path of a car being driven by a 75-year-old man who died at the scene. Sydney drivers are being promised a much faster run to the airport with a signing of a $2.6 billion contract for the new Sydney Gateway. As Tom Saker reports, the road will connect the airport to West Connex and will generate thousands of jobs. Good afternoon. The Sydney Gateway has been heralded as another stress buster for commuters and today the government announced it has awarded a building and design contract with construction set to begin next year. The gateway will connect the St Peter's interchange where the M4 and M8 meet to the airport, allowing commuters to bypass 26 sets of traffic lights and the government promises it will be toll free. Obviously the challenges around the recession uh, and here we are busting the recession as well with this type of publicly funded infrastructure. It is due for completion in 2024. Commuters are being told they could save up to 30 minutes on a trip from the inner west to the international airport, 22 minutes from Bankstown to the domestic terminal and 30 minutes from Silverwater to Port Botany. But the Port Botany connection won't be ready until 2026, pushed back by three years. While the Gateway will create 1,000 direct jobs and 3,000 indirect jobs, it also comes with a new price tag of $2.6 billion, up from $800 million when it was originally announced. Meantime, the North Connects appears to have passed its first Monday morning commuter test. The northwest traffic flowing smoothly for this morning's peak hour after the tunnel opened on Saturday morning. Residents along Pennant Hills Road experienced much less traffic noise this morning thanks to the new ban on trucks. Tom, thank you. David Brown joins us now with the very latest weather. Good to see some sun around today, Brownie. Oh, indeed, Anne, yes, and we're expecting similar conditions to unfold tomorrow. But look, at the moment, let's have a look at current conditions. 21 degrees in our city, feels like 18. Now, the city's total water storage has increased by 0.9% over the past week. You'll notice that the, uh, it stands at around 94.7% capacity overall, but Warren Gamba at 97 per cent. Statewide, fine today, apart from some isolated showers at, well, clear parts of the mid-north coast. That happened just a short time ago. It's been a sunny day throughout most of the state. But having said that, look, spring being spring, yep, there's always a change knocking on the door. Here it comes now, pushing through during the early hours of Thursday. It'll linger for most of the day. We're looking at a mixture of showers and possible storm activity throughout the uh, Sydney Basin. But it is looking good tomorrow. Fine, partly cloudy conditions, lengthy sunny breaks, temperatures, well, much like today. In fact, at the moment, you'll notice it's sitting on 22 degrees in Penrith. Parramatta's recording uh, 21 degrees on the coast at Cronulla. We've got uh, 19 degrees. And of course, I'll have the local forecast in detail, top of the hour. And See you then, Brownie. And still to come in Sydney's afternoon news on 7, shocking details, a deadly Halloween attack. Cameras are there as police make their move. Crashing down what the latest big bank results mean for shareholders and customers. Later, property surge, encouraging signs and now expectations of another rate cut. And like a bull in a Chinese restaurant, the rampage that sparked a hog hunt. It's got action. It's got drama. Don't worry. Here we go. He's got this. Nathan Fillion. You OK? Yeah, I probably should have stretched before that. Is The Rookie. New season tonight on 7. <laughs> Old grains, aren't they great? Mm. That's why we put every single bit of these grains into our snacks. Delicious. Mm. Great ways. A whole lot of whole grains in every bite. Here's a BS responsibly message from Sportsbet. Now, every spring racing carnival, BS levels go through the roof. 
There's know-it-alls, instant experts, silly omen bets at 50 to 1. Yeah, yeah, the horse has the same name as your girlfriend's cat. Who gives a rat? Cut through the BS and use the sports bet app with Same Race Multi. Combine multiple runners in the one race and... Oh, oh yes, look at those big odds. If it's a Same Race Multi, it's sports bet. Smart tech is everywhere. Smart fridge, smart car, smart doorbell. Hello. But Fitbit makes you smart about your health. This isn't some phone on your wrist. It's a way to help manage stress. Keep your heart strong. And tune in to your body. It's more than a watch. It's a smarter way to transform your health. Sunday night at the shops. Watch as they follow mindlessly, gathering supplies for the week ahead. Spag ball night. Shoppers flock as if in some synchronous ballet. But what's this? A young male forges through against the current toward what appears to be... Salmon? A delicious pesto salmon pasta is sure to attract his mate. Tassau, it's Tasmanian for salmon. Look around as the favourites come out, it begins. Observing with an eagle eye, mastering the art of stashing. Oh, brilliant Irv Grant. Cadbury favourites. Everyone gets their favourites. At Kmart, Christmas trading hours have begun. And with more midnight and 24-hour stores, you can shop day or night. If smarter shopping's on your wish list, head to Kmart. Let us entertain you with exclusive live streaming of the Lexus Melbourne Cup. That's right, catch the race that stops the nation live on the Tab app. Make a date with the edge of your seat this Lexus Melbourne Cup day. Tab, long may we play. Think of the people who need your support. Gamble responsibly. This is Becky. Well, this is day out Becky who spends a little differently to supermarket Becky, who's a bit more conservative than Black Friday Becky, who loves a bargain more than bill-paying Becky. It can be hard keeping track of your money, so Becky uses the Bankwest app. With low balance alerts and the ability to see who's really charging, she knows what her money's up to. Search Bankwest no-brainers. Bankwest, bank less. You're watching 7's 4pm City News and this is a view from Bondi where right now it's 19 degrees. A Sydney brother and sister have admitted assaulting and hindering police in a brawl four months ago at Riverwood. Evan Batten is covering the case. Evan, today's hearing came to a sudden conclusion. And the trial was due to start today over what was one of the ugliest incidents involving a brother and sister who turned on police, one of them kicking an officer in the face and another officer in the groin back in uh, June on a Riverwood street. But at the last minute today, the siblings pleaded guilty to assaulting and resisting police. It was actually sparked when officers tried to stop another one of their siblings, 20-year-old Mahanga Edwards, who was riding his electric scooter at a concerning speed along Belmore Road at Riverwood just before one o'clock. But as police spoke with him, things turned ugly and the ensuing scuffle was recorded on phone video. Stay away. Don't touch my sister! I'm Jezebel, what do you want to say to the police officers? No comment, cuz. You sorry for what happened? And court papers indicate that uh, Zafia Edwards has been charged by police on no fewer than 41 previous occasions. Now he and his sister Jezebel will appear back here at court in December for sentencing. And Thanks, Evan. Two people are dead and another five injured after a shocking Halloween attack in Canada. This is the moment police took down the suspect, a 24-year-old man accused of stabbing people with a ceremonial Japanese sword while dressed in medieval clothing. Police say the attacks are not believed to be terror-related. However, the exact motive appears unclear.
A wild intruder has sparked a major pig hunt in China. A security camera shows the moment a boar stormed into this restaurant, terrorising a waitress before fleeing. With police on the chase, the animal was spotted in a nearby workshop, tracked down and eventually tranquilised and taken to a local zoo. No one was injured, including the boar, which authorities say weighed in at 100 kilograms. Westpac has posted a huge slump in full year profit, down more than 60%. Live to our network finance editor, Gemma Acton. Gemma, the hits keep coming for one of the country's biggest banks. Yes, and they certainly do. Westpac had warned us last week that as a result of the ongoing customer refunds from the Royal Commission, the pandemic, and of course that enormous Austrac money laundering fine, that the profit this year would be hit, and indeed it was. Uh, it's sunk down to $2.6 billion, which is a 62% drop and it missed analysts' forecasts. Now, there were some bright spots in this. Firstly, fewer customers now are needing mortgage deferrals. So at the peak, there are around 146,000 home loans on deferral. Now that's down to 41,000. One other piece of good news was that Westpac will pay a final dividend, having paid no dividend at all at its interim result. Nonetheless, Chief Executive Peter King admits that the bank does need to do better. We've had to deal with our own issues as well as the impacts of COVID. And our results were disappointing. And Gemma, looking at the ASX today, how did Westpac fare? Not well, Anne. Uh, Westpac's share price was down by around half a percent, which was uh, the worst of the big four banks. In fact, ANZ and NAB had a very strong day today. And overall, the ASX 200 did quite well. So that was up around half a percent. Uh, the clear winner today once again was AMP. Its share price up around 8% today after rising about 18% on Friday. And that's as a US bidder, Ari's management, uh, continues to circle an attempt to buy it out. And Gemma Acton reporting. Thanks a lot, Gemma. Coming up next in Seven's Afternoon News, shop front smash, the driver accused of two collisions in one night. Half a million dollars, the new incentive to help solve a sickening murder. And in sport with Mel, a big boost for the Blues ahead of the Origin opener. Tonight on Seven News with Mark Ferguson. Manly star charged why Dylan Walker's in trouble again. Should QR codes be mandatory in Sydney venues? And a woman's highway to hell sparks green slip fury. Tonight on 7 News at 6. Every morning, know what's unfolding with the US election. You'll get it first from Natalie Barr. Breaking news out of Washington. Only on Sunrise. Red Rock Deli. Discover a world of deliciousness. This spring, Ladbrokes is changing the way you multi, putting the power in your hands and giving you more chances to win. With our new split and blended features, load up your multi legs with runners from the same race, and if any of them get up, you win. Get all the racing multi combinations you want, done in one. Ladbrokes, back yourself. It's never been more important to buy Australian than right now. Our local manufacturers and growers produce world-class products known for their quality, safety and reliability. All while generating local jobs, supporting our communities and helping Australian families now and into the future. So look for the logo The Nation Trusts to be sure it's authentically Australian made. Priceline Pharmacy Sister Club was already pretty perfect, but now it's had a makeover. It's even perfecter. You now get even more perky perks on top of your points. And the more you shop, the better it gets. Ooh, hello rewards. As a Diamond member, you'll get pampered even more. More points? You guessed it. And as a Pink Diamond member, even more. Scan your way to loyalty royalty with Priceline Pharmacy Sister Club. Have you tried the apple cider vinegar diet? Now you can with Nature's Way and their lifestyle plan. Feel fit and look fabulous this summer with Nature's Way apple cider tabs. My way is Nature's Way. At Kmart, Christmas trading hours have begun. And with more midnight and 24-hour stores, you can shop day or night. If smarter shopping's on your wish list, head to Kmart. Cookie people? 
Cream people, crumbs people, clean people, twist people, lick people, dunk people, munch people. It's on the play, people. If you twist, lick, dunk, then you're my people. We are Oreo people. A boy has been bitten by a shark at Port Macquarie on the state's mid-north coast. The 12-year-old was swimming at Town Beach at 6 o'clock this morning when he was bitten on his foot and upper leg. His relatively minor injuries suggest it was either a small shark or a wobbegong. Town Beach has been closed for the day. A man faces drink driving charges after crashing twice in the one night. The 27-year-old was arrested after his Holden Commodore smashed into a shop in Adelaide's West. Police believe he had earlier crashed a ute into a letterbox before leaving that vehicle and driving off in the Commodore. His licence was immediately suspended for six months and both cars have been impounded. Half a million dollars is on offer as reward for information into the murder of homeless mother of three, Monica Chetty. Ashley Hansen is following this story. Ashley, police are hoping to finally solve a very brutal crime. And it's been six years since registered nurse Monica Chetty was found with horrific burns in bushland here at West Hoxton. Police believe the mother of three was the victim of a cruel acid attack in January 2014. The 39 year old was discovered by members of the public suffering chemical burns to 80% of her body. She died 28 days later in hospital but never revealed to police who attacked her. Her son Daniel was just 15 when his mum was murdered. We want some sort of information, anything small, big, anything just to help us with this. Ms Chetty, who was of Indian Fijian descent, had fallen on tough times in the years leading up to her death. She was estranged from her family and homeless. Detectives are looking at one possible lead, that she may have been caught up in a fake marriage visa scam. Police say the circumstances surrounding her death are a mystery, but they won't give up on solving the case. And today's announcement of a $500,000 reward is proof of that. We're hoping that the, the net that we cast is much wider and that we do get some information in relation to not only the incident itself but her movements. Police say Monica Chetty's movements in the days leading up to the acid attack are crucial to the investigation and even the smallest detail could give investigators the break they need. And Thanks, Ash. New funding for suburban football stadiums will be a key announcement in this month's state budget. Money will be included for an overhaul at Cogra Oval in Sydney South and possibly a new stadium in Liverpool. The November 17 budget will also include already announced upgrades at Brookville, Brookvale and Penrith as part of stimulus measures to rebuild the post-COVID economy. Time for Sport now with Mel McLaughlin and it's not State of Origin without some mind games, Mel. Yeah, plenty of drama as well and the Maroons say rookie winger Xavier Coates will play Game 1 on Wednesday. That's despite scans revealing a shoulder sprain after injuring himself at training yesterday. Still, there's suspicion that Wayne Bennett's plotting some surprise changes. Well, if Wayne's foxing you, I'm not going to tell you, am I? <laughs> Blues fullback James Tedesco passed the final tests on his knee. Final big day and got through it sweet. Feels good, ready to go. Josh Adokar denies he's decided to stay in Melbourne, that he's agreed to join West Tigers or that it's a distraction. Leading trainer Danny O'Brien has a host of chances to win his second straight Melbourne Cup at Flemington tomorrow. Of O'Brien's four runners, Russian Camelot looms as the best hope. The four-year-old has been taking it easy since finishing third in the Cox Plate when favourite. He's been down at the beach every morning, so we're hoping uh, the, the sea environment's freshening him up just enough for the Melbourne Cup and, and he should be ready to go tomorrow. O'Brien also has last year's winner, Val and Declare, along with King of Leo Grants and Miami Bound. The Blues have beaten Queensland in a Sheffield Shield thriller, chasing 206 to win. They were cruising at three for 124. Then leg spinner Mitch Swepson intervened with his second five-wicket haul of the match. Panic attacked the New South Wales tail. There's going to be a run out. Nathan Lyon is going to be run out. Scores are still level. One wicket left. Sean Abbott calmly hit the winning runs off Manus Labuschagne to avoid the third tie in Shield history. Well, when his Indian Premier League team needed him most, Pat Cummins produced one of the spells of the tournament. Oh, brilliant! Unbelievable! He flew as if he were a bird. 
The Aussie star with a $3 million contract claimed four wickets in 13 balls, including the scalps of Ben Stokes and Steve Smith to get Kolkata home over Rajasthan. The win keeps Kolkata's playoff hopes alive. Manchester United's miserable start to the Premier League continues. The Red Devils are 15th on the table after a 1-0 loss to Arsenal at Old Trafford. United legend Roy Keane is sick of waiting for his former side to come good. You have they turned a the corner? You know, it's the, it's the longest corner ever. I don't see men out there. I don't see guys you want to be in the trenches with. Guys you trust. Gareth Bale's first goal since returning to Tottenham got Spurs home 2-1 over Brighton. Daniel Ricciardo and Lewis Hamilton shared a celebratory shooey after the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix at Imola. Max Verstappen bowed out late as Ricciardo charged home to finish third. After his record extending 93rd F1 victory, Hamilton decided to end his shooey boycott. <laughs> Three years ago on the podium, he goes, I'll never ever do that. I'll never drink it. And he even asked for it today. So uh, took me by surprise, but uh, 2020 is a year of the strange. So it was good fun. <laughs> Yeah, but the seven-time world champion says it tasted like toe jam, which is just gross. And bizarre scenes in the NFL this morning. Javon Wims sparked a melee by sucker-punching CJ Gardner-Johnson not once, but twice. It's understood this earlier incident from Gardner-Johnson is what got Wims so fired up. Wims was ejected and his side, the Chicago Bears, went down to the New Orleans Saints by three points. I just don't know why you do it and surely you're hurting your own hand just punching another guy in the helmet. Not clever really, is it? <laughs> Thank you, Mel. Thanks. This afternoon's top stories are next as the boss of Australia Post falls on her sword. An NRL star is charged with assault. How a trip to pick up pizza turned violent. Donald Trump rallies well into the night. Five states in one day. A sprint to the election. A rate cut on the way, but Sydney's property market is already bouncing back. And don't mess with the force. The driver pulled over and arrested by a stormtrooper. Who will be the world's most powerful person? Wednesday is election day. It's go time now! I'm working my ass off here. Seven has your best coverage with the might of Seven News, NBC and CNN. No other network has the expertise in Washington in their camps. I know we can heal this nation. You're so lucky I'm your president. Live right through the day, your definitive source is Seven News. studies the best athletes to create the most advanced range of sports fuel. Gatorade. You fuel us, we fuel you. Get the green light with Tabs Venue Mode. Enjoy exclusive markets and offers that bring your local to life every time you walk through the door. Download the Tab app to make a date with your local. Tab, long may we play. Feel the clarity of non-drowsy Claritine for fast, powerful 24-hour hay fever and allergy relief from sneezing, runny nose, itchy eyes and skin. Because stuffed animals are clearly no substitute for real ones. Feel the clarity and live Claritine clear. When frequent heartburn kept waking me up at night, enough was enough. So I tried Nexium 24 Hour. Unlike antacids that often require multiple doses per day, Nexium 24 Hour is better. Just one tablet a day can provide 24 hour protection. Live life less interrupted. The greatest bravery is thinking for yourself out loud so the whole world can hear. Coming soon, the 4 Series Coupe. Nivea Cellular Filler Elasticity with Hyaluron, Collagen and Elastin Booster visibly reduces even deep wrinkles and improves elasticity. Visible results in one week. Nivea Cellular Filler Elasticity. What's the bet? Wait, don't answer that, because punters built a race predictor, so you don't have to build a race predictor. Just tweak the form factors that matter to you, and it shows every horse's chance of winning. Download the punters app today. Live from Sydney. 7 News with Ann Sanders.
Welcome back. In breaking news this afternoon, the head of Australia Post has resigned following a scandal over expenditure, including the purchase of luxury watches for executives. Christine Holgate stepped down after the Prime Minister expressed his outrage at four Australia Post executives receiving Cartier watches. Ms Holgate released a statement this afternoon saying she appreciates the gifts involved do not pass the pub test. She says she's not seeking compensation and will cooperate with an inquiry into spending by the entire executive team. Returning to our top story and NRL star Dylan Walker will be back in court later this month accused of assaulting two men at a Northern Beaches pizza shop. Natasha Squarey is at Brookvale. And Natasha, this comes just 18 months after he was found not guilty of assaulting his fiancée. That's right. The NRL Integrity Unit is once again liaising with Dylan Walker, his club and police, but says it's likely to wait until the court process plays out before deciding if any action should be taken with Walker not due to play until next season. Police say the 26-year-old Manly Seagull star arrived at this Narrowena takeaway shop to pick up a pizza around nine last night. Staff say Walker was agitated and then went behind the counter before he was asked to leave twice. It's alleged Walker attacked a 22-year-old staff member and the man's 53-year-old father. Walker is then accused of trying to get into the car of a woman he didn't know and then left. He was arrested a short time later and charged at Manly Police Station before walking free on bail. Obviously, I hope it didn't happen. It's only early. It's obviously very out of character. He's a good mate of mine, so um, yeah, obviously, I hope, hope it didn't happen and we've got him for next year. Now, Walker was previously before the courts just last year. He was charged with assaulting his fiance, but he was found not guilty. He's now facing two fresh charges of common assault and will face court in two weeks. Americans who haven't already voted will head to the polls in less than two days. Paul Caddick is in North Carolina, one of President Trump's many pit stops on a marathon day spent rallying support as the election nears. Good afternoon. With just hours now until Election Day, Donald Trump has certainly been trying to make the most of them, holding five rallies in five states today. A day finishing with a Florida rally ending after midnight, but beginning in freezing cold Michigan, battling wind and a little snow as Trump lashed out at his rivals. They want to close down your factories, ship your jobs to China, eliminate private health care, destroy the suburbs. I got rid of the, you know, I always say, Women, whoa. whoa. The women, that was them speaking. The women of the suburbs, you've got to love me. From there to Iowa, where a new survey puts him ahead, and then here to battleground North Carolina, where turnout on election day itself will be crucial, with the record-breaking early vote expected to favour Joe Biden. Joe Biden is not up to this job. All you have to do is watch him for about five minutes. It's time for Donald Trump to pack his bags and go home. Joe Biden, by contrast, today holding just two events, both in Philadelphia in the key toss-up state of Pennsylvania. In two days, we can put an end to a president who says, fail to protect this nation. In two days, we can put an end to a presidency that fanned the flames of hate poured gasoline on every opportunity he had. As the two candidates battle it out, an investigation's underway into this incident between their supporters. Video showing vehicles flying Trump flags surrounding a Biden campaign bus on a Texas highway. Those on board reportedly saying the cars were trying to slow and stop the bus, and they called police. Here's how the candidates have reacted. The Biden bus was heading, there was a big Greyhound bus, light bus, painted blue with Biden's markings on the side. And it was on Interstate Highway in Texas. And a bunch of Trump trucks, pickup trucks with Trump flags, tried to run it off the road. You see the way our people, they, you know, they were protecting his bus yesterday because they're nice. The FBI confirming they are now investigating what happened. From Hickory, North Carolina, it's back to you. Thanks, Paul. And 7 News will bring you every crucial moment as America decides starting from 5am Wednesday and into special coverage straight after sunrise. 
Actor Craig McLaughlin says a woman who accuses him of indecent acts during a Melbourne stage show often complimented him on his body. 54-year-old McLaughlin has today given evidence for the first time, denying the accusations against him. Jade Vincent has the details from Melbourne. Actor Craig McLaughlin hasn't held back as he fights charges of indecently assaulting four of his female co-stars, going as far as to label one of his accusers as the most vulgar individual he's ever encountered. The allegations stem from his run as Frankenfurter in the Rocky Horror Picture Show in 2014. Giving evidence remotely from Sydney, Craig McLaughlin says he was flabbergasted when the accusations were made public, denying he indecently touched or assaulted any of the women. Fans of the TV star uploaded a video of McLaughlin's song, It's All Right, with messages of support as he faced court today. The 55-year-old admitted to kissing some of his accusers, but told the court that in show business, it was commonplace. It's just what we do. He said he would kiss a female colleague to congratulate her after a performance. The Logie winner claimed one of the women who had made allegations against him would regularly enter his dressing room uninvited, wearing only underwear, and sit on his lap to tell stories and jokes. He spoke of being a confidant to the women and as the leading man, he liked to take an interest in all of the cast and crew. He denied any kissing or playful interactions had any sexual connotations, while also claiming he was subjected to sexual pranks backstage. Craig McLaughlin is facing a total of 13 charges. The contested hearing is expected to run all week with further defence witnesses to be called. A fire emergency forced the evacuation of an RSL club on Sydney's North Shore overnight. An electrical sign erupted in flames at Chatswood RSL just after 11 o'clock. The sign was on the external wall of the club and fire crews managed to stop the fire from spreading. The RSL was closed for the night after the fire. New details have emerged about a deadly crash in Sydney's west that saw an allegedly stolen car slam into a light pole. Two boys aged 15 and 17 died. Another 17-year-old male survived and was taken to hospital for treatment. Seven News can reveal the two youths who lost their lives were brothers and the survivor is a cousin. A 37-year-old man who allegedly chased the car in another vehicle faces several charges, including dangerous driving. A man who boarded a school bus and assaulted a teenage student has been jailed for at least three months. Leonie Ryan has been in court. Leonie, the magistrate, praised the victim's bravery, protecting his younger schoolmates. Good afternoon, Anne. Well, it's been almost a year since Brenton Lowe stormed onto a school bus on Sydney's Lower North Shore after a minor prang, and today he learnt his fate for punching a teenage boy in the face. The 21-year-old pleaded guilty to assault, occasioning actual bodily harm and affray. Brenton, you worried about going to jail today? Police back state low started screaming at the bus driver following the minor collision at Lane Cove and when one boy on board taunted him, he got on board the bus which was carrying 40 students and started threatening them. Who stuck the finger up, huh? Who just... One 15-year-old tried calming the situation down by telling Low most of the students were only 13 years old. He responded by punching him in the face, causing his head to hit the roof. It also caused damage to his teeth and he was left with a cut underneath his eye. Low has since written an apology letter to his victims for his behaviour that day. In sentencing him to a maximum nine months jail, the magistrate said the 15-year-old who was assaulted was a hero standing up to a coward for protecting the other students including his younger brother who was sitting next to him. All the boys on the bus I think were very brave. You don't expect uh, children to have to go through what they went through. It was a, an uncivilised act of violence. No sooner was he in the police cells, his lawyer applied for bail pending an appeal. Now that was granted by the magistrate. The appeal hearing is likely to take place sometime next year. Official interest rates could fall to a new record low tomorrow, with the Reserve Bank considering a cut from the present 0.25%. Chris Maher is in Marylands. Chris, the latest figures show Sydney property holding up well. 
and with everything pointing to falling house prices because of the pandemic, latest data suggests in most places the reverse is actually the case. Now the numbers from real estate analyst CoreLogic for October reveal property prices nationally actually rose for the first time in five months up 0.4 percent. In fact the only metropolitan market that didn't register a rise in values was Melbourne, no surprise, but there are signs there even of improvement. In Sydney, October prices rose by 0.1 percent, not much, but across 12 months Sydney has seen a staggering 6 percent jump. Houses have led the way. Apartment values have suffered from falling rents and scarcity of tenants. The other major point of note, regional house prices are now outstripping metropolitan ones in gains. Surprising results, despite the impact of COVID. People seem to be really embracing this work from home movement and they're being able to work from anywhere. So the regions are looking really strong from that regard and everybody's looking to buy or rent properties with a study. And the Reserve Bank meets tomorrow with a interest rate cut tip that would bring official rates close to 0%. And Thanks, Chris. Still ahead on Seven's afternoon news, diabetes warning, the dangers not even sufferers know about. Supermarket iPhones, the new deals to save hundreds of dollars. And it's 21 degrees in Blacktown. Rani will have our forecast soon. The Greatest British Mysteries, Monday to Thursday at 8.30. This is my favourite part, we're off to catch the culprit. Uncover the truth with the straight-talking Detective Foyle. My source, my case, my decision. The eagle-eyed Inspector Morse. Watch carefully, Lewis. Master Sleuth Lewis. And new Murdoch Mysteries. No crime is unsolvable. Great British Mysteries. All you need to launch a celebrated art career. A cheap studio, a Squarespace website with an expensive looking template, and a second job you're going to quit after your first solo show. Nervous parents, an acid green period, a happy career making accident, and a Squarespace online store to sell the must have gift of the holiday season. My go-to is Panadol Extra, because if I don't, with my migraine headaches, I'm kind of useless in the kitchen. It's good to know you can still help out the people who need you. Together, let's rethink care. Whether you're looking to lose weight, stay healthy and enjoy more free time, or you're finding it difficult to prepare healthy meals yourself, Light and Easy has a solution for you. Light and Easy gives you your choice of over 100 delicious meals. Designed by dietitians, created by chefs, and all delivered to your door. If you're looking for a healthy eating solution, look no further than Australia's number one healthy meal delivery service. Visit lightandeasy.com.au or call 13 15 12 today. This spring, Ladbrokes is changing the way you multi, putting the power in your hands and giving you more chances to win. With our new split and blended features, load up your multi-legs with runners from the same race, and if any of them get up, you win. Get all the racing multi-combinations you want, done in one. Ladbrokes. Back yourself. So, I need a holiday. Do you? Yeah, for Australia. <gasps> what about the Outback? Yes, yes. We could catch our own lunch. I know exactly what you mean. We should just go somewhere we've always wanted to go. Yes. Oh, honey, I could teach the kids to surf. You don't know how to surf. Yeah, I mean, obviously someone would teach me and then I would pass on the wisdom. Plan a holiday here this year for Australia. The greatest risk of all. I'm going to take the top off. One question for big dollars or disaster. New The Chase, weekdays on 7. A suspected drunk driver has been stopped in his tracks by a stormtrooper. The off-duty highway patrol trooper was on her way home from a Halloween party dressed as a Star Wars villain when she spotted a car travelling the wrong way. The driver was pulled over and arrested by the costume-clad trooper all in a day's work, even on Halloween. 
Diabetes Australia has launched a new campaign to encourage those with the condition to manage their illness and prevent long-term damage. As Samantha Brett reports, new research shows almost half of those with type 2 diabetes don't realise how serious it can be. Well, around 1.2 million Australians live with type 2 diabetes and many of those don't know the further risks involved with having the disease. Diabetes is the slow pandemic of the 21st century. Uh, you know, there's very large numbers of people with type 2 diabetes. A new study has revealed that while more than a million Australians live with type 2 diabetes, 40% are unaware of its connection to kidney disease and heart failure, which can be deadly. It's not a, an old age thing. It can happen in, the, in people in their 20s and 30s. And if they develop this, this kidney damage or other damage, uh, it's going to be with them for the rest of their life. Like 56-year-old Joseph Kazana, who was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes at age 27 and now suffers severe heart and kidney complications. My general day-to-day -day life is, revolves around medicine, revolves around doctor's appointments. It certainly has changed my life. I'd say for the worst. Prevention, unfortunately, is not always an option. Type 2 diabetes is hereditary, but can be kept under control. A new campaign out today titled If I Had Known chronicles the stories of it's sufferers who let their health slip. A sober reminder of the importance of taking early action. It's hoped this new campaign will help those living with type 2 diabetes and those at risk be inspired to do more to avoid further complications. Sydney 6pm News is coming up with Mark Ferguson. Hello, Mark. What are you working on in the newsroom? Yeah, hello there. And tonight, Dylan Walker is once again in the spotlight for all the wrong reasons, charged with assault. We'll have more on the Manly Star's alleged involvement in a pizza restaurant brawl, including exclusive pictures and how the club is responding. Sydney restaurants are being put on notice with major concerns about COVID compliance after a shocking breach in Liverpool. Could health authorities make QR codes mandatory? There's been another bombshell twist in the Australia Post Cartier watch scandal with embattled boss Christina Holgate forced to make a tough decision. Why her position and $1.5 million pay packet are now up for grabs. A seven news special investigation, a woman's highway to hell leads to an insurance nightmare how it's exposing major flaws in the green slip system. And thousands of jobs and a faster run to the airport, the $2.5 billion gateway linking Mascot to West Connex. And all those details and plenty more, 7 News tonight at 6 o'clock. See you at 6. Thank you, Fergo. Prince William has revealed he contracted coronavirus back in April but kept the diagnosis under wraps so as not to cause worry. British newspaper The Sun reports that William spoke of his illness at a recent engagement, saying he had been hit hard and struggled to breathe as the virus took hold. A Kensington Palace source says William fell ill around the same time both his father and the Prime Minister were also infected. The UK is currently experiencing a costly new COVID wave. The nation heading back into four weeks lockdown. It's 4.48. Let's get a check on Sydney's traffic. Good afternoon, Marina Ivanovic here in the Tassal Salmon traffic chopper. If you're heading through Greenacre, we've got a truck accident for Roberts Road. It's heading northbound, taking out the left lane at the moment. We've got very heavy southbound delays through the area as well. And having a look at Homebush West Centenary Drive, quite a slow southbound run down towards Arthur Street. Spag ball night, stir fry for dinner. Switch it for salmon this week with fresh or smoked Tassal salmon. Tassal, it's Tasmanian for salmon. Thousands of Australian cars still have faulty airbags with less than two months to go before the deadline to have the potentially deadly problem fixed. The consumer watchdog has set December 31 as the date to have faulty Takata airbags replaced. Latest figures show Mitsubishi has replaced them in all except one vehicle. Nissan has more than 19,000 vehicles outstanding and there are more than 10,000 Toyota Lexus vehicles to be recalled. Once the domain of fresh food and groceries, a major supermarket chain will now add iPhones to their list of products. As Georgia Commonsoli reports, Coles will be selling refurbished smartphones with big savings on offer. Good afternoon. From Wednesday, Coles customers will be able to buy a recycled iPhone 7 in store across most states. And retailing for just over $200 means this will be a game changer for the consumer. 
Typically, iPhones can set you back thousands of dollars, but now shoppers will be able to pick up a second-hand iPhone 7 at a Coles checkout whilst picking up their weekly groceries. The phones are recycled, undergoing a 72-point inspection process to make sure each phone is ready for use. Their previous data is wiped before landing in store. Once there, the phones come with a $10 boost SIM card to get you started, and those behind the rollout say it's a game-changer. We know that value is more important than it's ever been and we've been selling phones for a very long time now but everyone loves an iPhone and everyone loves an iPhone at a great price. The recycled phones won't be available online. You'll have to come in store to pick one up and they'll be available in Victoria and Queensland Coles in just a few months' time. Next in Seven's Afternoon News, David Brown will be here with your very latest forecast. Not one woman has got across this. So today I want to make it that day. Oh, be the first, be the first. Do not let go of that rope. Get up there. We haven't even started yet. Freezing cold water, you go into a state of shock. And stay there. Because your body thinks it's going to die. This is the course of finding out how resilient you are. Absolutely shredded my nuts. <laughs> how much grit and determination they really have. SAS Australia, tonight, 7.30 on 7. Bye, Cocky. Bye-bye. Finally. <clears throat> the way I see it, you've got two options in life. Settle for what you're given or speak up for what you deserve. That's Cricket. <laughs> Winter is coming. See ya. Show me DiCaprio movies. You said it, Leo. Foxtel, now with voice control. Telfast knows that hay fever can take you by surprise. Relieve symptoms fast with Telfast, Australia's number one non-drowsy hay fever brand. And to prevent symptoms before they start, try Telnasal Allergy Spray. The greatest bravery is thinking for yourself out loud so the whole world can hear. Coming soon, the 4 Series Coupe. Funny, when it comes to killing pests without chemicals, Aussies tend to resort to rather unnatural methods. But now... There's a more natural way to eliminate bugs. Stop. New Aerogard Home is made with a 100% plant-based active, which makes it suitable for everyone, except bugs. New Aerogard Home, the more natural way to go. Introducing Cukes Baby Cucumbers. Cukes are perfect for school, perfect for work. There's no cutting, no fussing, no need for a fork. Nothing's quite as incredible, nothing's quite as cute. Nothing's quite as cool as Cukes. Keeping your body in perfect shape isn't always easy. Fortunately, keeping your hair in perfect shape is. The Crew Cut, exclusive to Shaver Shop, with Japanese steel blades which cut in any direction. The Crew Cut from Via Sassoon. The Clipper has evolved. Invest with Latrobe Financial, Australia's multi-award winning wealth manager. Returning a current variable rate of 4.5% reviewed monthly on a 12-month investment. Make your money work harder for you. Call 138010. The greatest risk of all. I'm going to take the top off. Oh, wow. One question. This question stands between you and $40,000. For big dollars or disaster. Wonder Woman wears golden armour modelled on which bird? <sighs> New The Chase. Weekdays at 5 on 7. Let's check our latest weather now with David Brown. Hello, Brownie. Afternoon, and Look, it's a beautiful lot oh, Conditions, as you can see, right across the Harbour City. Partly cloudy skies at the moment. Cool, though. In fact, our top temperature, 22.2 degrees. When did that happen? Well, it unfolded during lunchtime. And by the way, it's about one degree on the cool side of normal. Stay wide at the moment. You'll see it's sitting on 19 degrees and it's clear in Newcastle. Coffs Harbour to further north. We've got uh, 21 degrees. Tamworth. Clear skies and a little bit warmer, 25 degrees. Latest satellite data, it shows essentially clear skies across most of our state this afternoon. Still got this cool southerly running up the uh, coast. That will change across, well, over the next 24 to 48 hours. But tomorrow, though, look at this. Warmer northerly winds starting to unfold in the western half of our state. Yes, there is a change on the way. 
It'll impact us later in the week, but uh, tomorrow essentially light winds and clear skies for the eastern half of our state. And of course, sea breezes will dominate during the afternoon. Interstate, that's warming up in Melbourne under a northerly airstream. 30 degrees, warmer again in Adelaide, 33 degrees with high cloud increasing. Sunny for uh, Brisbane tomorrow and around 28 degrees. For our city, our forecast top 22 degrees. Much like today, it will be a dry and sunny day with light winds and afternoon coastal sea breezes. Looking further ahead, a little bit warmer on Wednesday, mid-20s coastal, low 30s in our west. Thursday, showers throughout the day. There'll be some thunderstorms as well, a much cooler day, some big falls are possible. Friday's coastal shower too. As for the weekend, well, a mixed bag, unsettled. That's the latest from the weather set of more at 6 a.m. All right, Brownie, thank you very much. And that's Sydney's 4pm news for this Monday. Mark Ferguson will bring you 7 News at 6. I'm Ann Sanders. Stay with 7 now for The Chase Australia and I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great night. He thinks they are all his 